going on everybody brent coming to you solo this time i had an idea man y'all know if y'all listen to the podcast every week or have been all these years we pick movies out of the bags right i got like there's three bags over here full of movies that i don't know what I mean it would take us decades to get to all this shit so i just said you know what fuck it man i do the quick reviews on letterbox and people seem to like reading them so i'm like you know what we can speed some of this process up a little bit more and I'll just tell you about them on the motherfucking YouTube channel if you want to watch it, which I hope you do. I mean, you here, ain't you? <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, I just I got my bag right here. And I just went ahead and picked one off the top. Today, I'm going to tell you all about this Sheborg. There's a store right across the street from my apartment right here called Dollar Tree. And they got movies that's in everything in that store is a dollar. That's the gimmick. And so I always go to the movie section and see what they got. A lot of the movies that's been in this bag. I mean, a lot of them came from buybacks that, you know, that trip where I spent 150 bucks on movies back in 2017 for the podcast. But a lot of them now that have been added to it are Dollar Tree movies. And this was one of them. And I mean, I mean, shit, man, I saw the title, the goofy looking shit, looked at the back, which you probably shouldn't. There's a hell of a spoiler on the back. I don't know who the fuck I did. That was it because I didn't really... I hadn't looked at the case really since I bought the motherfucker. And so when I was looking at it after I watched the movie, I haven't realized like that's a fucking spoiler on the back. Like crazy. Like who fucked that up? That'd be like if, um, like, oh, well, at this point, everybody know the secret. But if you bought like a copy of Psycho or something and on the back of it, it just had, well, spoilers, I guess. <laughs> they just had Norman Bates dressed up like the mom and shit on the cover or on the back. It's like, well, if somebody by chance hadn't seen that shit yet, there go the motherfucking spoiler. There's your fucking ending right there, motherfucker. Like, that's kind of what, you know. Hey, if you're watching this too, I'm about to spoil some shit too. So, while I'm talking shit about people getting spoiled, don't watch them and listen to me if you give a fuck about finding out about this movie. Go to Dollar Tree, get you a copy. Or, I mean, it's on Tubi and it's here on YouTube. So, take your pick. Let's go over here. Did take a few notes though. Just let me know. Because I had a habit for the podcast. Sheborg, also known as Sheborg Massacre, came out in 2016. Australian flick, which I didn't know that. And then I hear them accents, it's like, oh, now I know that. They're all wearing these cybernetic plugs in their eyes. And and this Mexican guy killed Rick with a whipper snipper. And but then we found this green slime. No, no, that's the the, the Alien secretions. The secretions. Yes. Green and the there was that's non-cybernetic. Yes, uh-huh. Green alien slime. And it pretty much just melted oh, him. Like, like the it, Wicked Witch like in the West. And I just got on them and there was like <laughs> Directed by Daniel Armstrong. Not familiar with the homie, but I know you now, motherfucker. Basically, you know, just to break it down, the things I liked about the movie is all the it was just it's mad goofy. It's an hour and like what I say, 26 minutes long. And it never, I mean, well, I can't say it never because, you know, I actually do have, I have something to say about that, some, the ending almost, but it never really bored me. I'll say I wasn't bored. It's hard to be bored with this movie because it's so motherfucking outrageous. I mean, it's a gory ass movie. Like, I know that's a low, but it reminds me of trauma. Oh, from real shit. That's kind of what it reminds me of a fucking trauma movie with maybe a little bit more budget. Maybe, or maybe just because it's newer, we got better technology to make it not look as cheap as the before. But it's not bad though. I um, I didn't know what the fuck to expect coming into. It. I didn't know if this was because I mean, the front of the box make it look like a motherfucking horror movie, but it ain't really a horror movie. It's kind of I would classify it as like an action comedy with like maybe 
I don't know. I mean, not even horror. I mean, the horror element would be the gore. There's no real scares, except for maybe one. There's a stinger if you stick around after the credits, because thanks to Marvel, I fucking do that now. But I stuck around and I'm like, I don't know if it's supposed to be a, a horror, like kind of jumpy thing, but I'll, t- I'll tell you about it afterwards. I, did, I did enjoyed all the absurdity of the movie because there's even like they're, <laughs> they take shit from other movies because there's even a, um, what would I call it? There's a, this, the fucking Sheboard has a thing in her mouth <laughs> um, to kill people with. It's all right. I can't quite put my finger on what the fuck it reminds me of. I know it's from another movie, but I I just can't quite put my finger on what the fuck it is I'm trying to think of. Nah, probably not that. I also really like the characters and, you know, the characterization and all that because you get the two lead characters. You got Dylan and Eddie. Then you also got a, a nerdy chick. I think her name was Velma. I kind of think I caught that in the notes, and she actually looks like Velma from Scooby Doo. Yeah, Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo. Can't even talk, but she looks like her a little bit. So I mean, maybe that's what the fuck her name was. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe not. I never got the name. It's just Lois. It's one good dash for it, and we're at the front door. Bit of zig, bit of zag. I'm free. You still have to get the data that I collected from the crash site. There's no way. It's gonna be locked up in evidence somewhere. That data is our only hope. Saving the world. Important, right? We can wait. Uh, I don't think one of your cigar and flamethrower approaches is going to cut it this time, D. We need a proper strategy. No, I didn't mean I had one. I just meant we needed one. Ow! But then there's a dude named Rick. He's a little bumblefuck, little scaredy cat, little rock star dude. That uh, Eddie trying to get that dick. And unfortunately, spoilers, she don't get that dick because Rick gets fucking murdered. He get murdered hard, even. He waited. <laughs> Eddie, no. Rick. <laughs> if you're a big animal fan, if you don't like seeing animals get murdered on screen and shit, like, I won't say this is cannibal holocaust level, of course, because they were really killing animals in that movie. But I'll just say... The original title for this movie that I heard, well, because I actually watched the fucking uh, special feature on the DVD. Maybe that's a slight spoiler. But um, <laughs> the movie was called Sheborg Puppy Farm Massacre. And then it got shortened to Sheborg Massacre. And then as you see, what I have is just called Sheborg. So one of the first things the Sheborg does when they get off the motherfucking ship or whatever is they stomp, they mud hole stomp, stone cold that motherfucker, a puppy. And I'll just, I burst the fuck out laughing because I know there's a whole subset of people that will see that and probably turn this movie the fuck off. Whereas I laugh my ass off. So am I sick? Probably. But I'm just warning you in advance because they do it more than once. One of the sheepwork is eating a fucking dog at one point and like biting into it, like fake blood and everything. Like this movie, like fuck dogs. I mean, the movie don't fuck dogs, you know, but I mean, it says, it says fuck dogs. You get what I'm saying? Another thing I really liked about the movie, though, too, is the effects. Like, I don't, I couldn't find numbers of how much this cost to make, but I did know the dude in the documentary, the director, said that he pretty much funded it from his own savings account and everybody volunteered, but I don't think anybody really got paid, so I can't imagine it was a lot of money going into it. But the, the suit don't look bad. The suit looks pretty motherfucking cool. I mean, that's, it's not actually that far off from how it looks on the cover. I mean, of course, they, you know, shining up a little bit and all that for the cover, but. I was surprised how good this shit looked. And like I said, they got mad blood and Nickelodeon gack or whatever the fuck it is. They swinging around the movie and 
I mean, they had a couple, like, they actually had locations and shit. Like, the production value for it to be off somebody's savings account is pretty damn cool. His savings account must be better than mine because if I showed you what I got in my savings account, I wouldn't probably be able to make a motherfucking trip up the street, let alone a motherfucking movie, but that's besides the point. If I had to say something I didn't like, though, I wasn't a fan of the last, like, well, I can't say that because, like I said before, the movie's not boring. But after about, I think I even hit the button to check the timer. About 56 minutes, I was kind of getting to the point where I'm like, all right, you know, let's let's get this popping. Let's hit that ending real quick. Like, I wasn't bored, but I think the movie, it's kind of hard to explain because, it, I mean, what I'm about to say make it sound like it's probably boring, but it started to feel slightly monotonous after a certain point, like almost an hour. It's like the same things kept happening. And they even kept fighting the same cyborgs or she over and over again because throughout the movie, the main Sheborg pretty much infects people with like Sheborg shit, like turns them into Sheborgs. And I guess there's a couple guys, so Heborgs, I guess. So it's almost like some Star Trek. Like I said, the Borg thing, you know, the assimilation, it's assimilating motherfuckers. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's because they don't have a million people that they can, you know, have all the different characters with. You see a lot of the ones start coming back over and over again. Like even ones you thought were dead. Like there's a motherfucker that gets psycho two with a shovel. And I thought he was dead, but then he comes back with a goddamn weed whacker. So it kind of got slightly monotonous, but like I said, it wasn't boring. It just was like, you know, it's still kind of fun to watch, but it's like, I've seen it though. Let's, let's move on to some different type shit. Am I making any fucking sense? Like, I, I feel like I'm talking in circles or something. I feel like I'm doing the movie shit. I'm going in a fucking circle. But it's just, it's hard to explain because, like I said, I won't say, it's very fucking hard to say you're bored in this movie. Like, there's so much weird, goofy shit. And like I said, the characters are fun. Like, the two main characters are doing, like, good shit. Like, I love the characters. The nerdy girl and the cop that comes to help out later than them, you know, they didn't get my attention as much. But the two main girls, though, I loved what the fuck they were doing. So, I guess that's a good and a bad thing, huh? What are you doing? I'm probing. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, why? For information. From his butthole? I know, from his brain, you beat up. Oh. I'm kind of stuck now, for real. I'm trying to think of what else, like, was bad about the movie, but I think the only thing is that, yeah, I mean, the biggest problem that I had with it is that, it, like I said, it just became monotonous after a while. You know, I just wanted to see where the plot was going. I mean... The plot, I guess, maybe is not that strong to begin with. Maybe that can be another negative thing is the plot in general by itself is not like the strongest thing. It's just kind of like, what was it? What's it? Like, it's like different skits that kind of lead to an end point, if that makes sense. Like, cause like, but then, like I said, they start to repeat them a little bit and it's like, all right, man, I seen this. Sorry, right, let's keep it going. But then sometimes they will finesse it just when I'm thinking, you know, oh, I've seen, I, like, you know, they stomp the dog out and it's like, oh, okay, they go fuck up another dog and then it's like, oh, now they're eating the dog, you know, something different or, you know, the motherfucker got Psycho 2 with the shovel, but now, you know, he's out here with a weed whacker and he's getting his shit cut up. You know, it's like the same thing happened, but they sometimes finesse it or change it up, add a little bit of spice, you know, to it to make it not as, you know, similar. But at the same time, like I said, it did still start to wear down after about an hour, but I didn't hate it, though. The other two things I could say that I really didn't like about the movie is, um, I mean, it's nitpicky as fuck, but... I was talking about before, there's a uh, stinger after the end credits because I guess, well, I guess I have to give some context here. Basically, they stop, you know, the good guys win. They stop the Sheborg, but not before Eddie, the secondary main character, gets fucking murdered. Like, they murder her ass, which in a plus is like, you know, that was cool because I did not expect that shit. That was a legitimate shock. I'm like, oh, they fucked her up. I didn't expect it because then she, she, she get it rough. She, like, she get her tongue ripped out and then I... I I think she, did she break her neck? I don't know what the fuck she did the same time. Either she either like pushed her shit real hard or jammed her fucking hand in there. Did some shit to her, but she died hard as fuck. Like, died harder than Bruce Willis out in this bitch. And 
And then like I then the sheborgs stand over top of her, like chewing on her tongue and shit because the sheborgs, their thing is that they love to eat the human flesh and the doggy flesh and all that. And then they like to lick on cell phones to get the energy out of them because they, they they just literally are sucking power. So if there was like robot dicks, they'd be probably be sucking dick. That's a that's the porno parody though. We we ain't gonna talk about that. What the hell is she doing? I don't know. So long as whatever that is stays away from us, I don't care. Come on, let's go fun prick. You mean Rick? I know what I mean. <sighs> Which, if there was one thing that disturbed me more than anything, like most people would be like, oh my God, the dogs are getting fucked up. The thing that fucked with me the most is these people licking on cell phones and shit, because I, them bitches be dirty. Motherfuckers be in the bathroom on them shits, like wiping their ass and touching all over their cell phone. We've all guilty of it. I don't give a fuck who you are. We've all done that shit. Before you wipe your ass, you, you watching the motherfucking movie, you wipe your ass. And then you can take your fucking phone, you set it down. And when you go to set that phone down, now you got the little shit particles all in your motherfucking crevasses and shit. So you got shit on your phone. And they out here licking phones. That fucked me up more than any dog in eight in this movie. I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. Can we just focus? Let's get out of here. But... Say that to say, the end credit stinger, I wasn't exactly sure if this was her or not. I couldn't tell because she had the makeup on and shit and she was dressed different and everything. But they defeat the Sheborg and at the end of the movie you find out that it's basically, I, I, it's seemingly leading toward a post-apocalyptic type thing because they all look way different now. They look like they're ready to go to war now, like they've been doing this for a while. And they go out to, you know, fight more Sheborgs and there's fucking... Uh, more ships coming down from the sky. That's how the movie ends. So it's like, you know, the fight continues. But after the credits, you see, uh, was it Eddie? I, um, I think it's her anyway. But back is a she board and she looks into the camera and she says something. Like, whatever the fuck that was she said, I had to hit the subtitles, and the subtitles said, what was it? It just said, good boy, in the subtitle, and I was like, either that was something I fucking completely missed out, like a reference to, unless that was like another dog reference. But then again, when I tried to listen to it after hearing the subtitle, I'm like, dad, I don't want, I ain't what the fuck it sounded like she's saying, and it drove me crazy. I'm like, what the fuck is she saying? Because if it was good boy, they garbled the fuck out of that speech, or maybe y'all heard it just now, and I didn't. I don't know. Maybe I'm just tripping. But that was one thing, it, it nitpicky, it bothered me. But if I had to give it a final rating on Letterbox, because we're doing this by Letterbox rules, because that's where I do the quick reviews normally. On the podcast, we do whatever through 10. I can't even say 1 through 10 or 0 through 10, because we give negatives and pluses sometimes. So it's a score of something out of 10 on the podcast. But here, we're going to do them out of 5 stars, because that's how it is on Letterbox. And when the movie ended, you know, I pay a dollar for it. Brand new, a dollar tree. I will say flat out, it's worth a buck. And it's on Tubi and it's on YouTube for free. So if you like like goofy trauma type movies and shit, like that really don't take themselves too serious where it's low budget, but you can tell everybody having fun type deal, it's worth a watch. But if I had to give it a star rating, it might be a three out of five. I liked it. So that equates to what, about a six on the podcast score, scale, whatever. I think that's about right because I enjoyed it. Like I said, it wasn't great. Like, I wouldn't, like, watch this shit, like, every day or nothing like that. Like, maybe if I'm bored or maybe if somebody's going through the bag or my upstairs collection, like, hey, what, what's she, Borg? I'd be like, pop that motherfucker in. Let's find out. You know? But it probably won't be one I go back to a ton. But I did have fun with it. I can't front and act like I didn't like the shit. I was laughing a lot. I was, like I said, when the girl got murdered and shit, I, it was legit. I was genuinely like, oh, shit. You know, I didn't expect that. So, you know, I was into the movie, but... It's cool. It's fine, man. It's a six. That's what I'm going to give. Oh, that's got to be a little bit stingy. bit stingy? Well, put it in there. And put it in there. Let's fight. And one more for good luck. Yeah. One more movie out the bag. PJ saved from that one because I don't know how he would have felt about that one. Our music, our, our music, our movie tastes are slightly different. I don't know if he'd have fucked with that one, but it's all right because 
I got a lot more to choose from. So thank you for watching. Check out She Borg. Shout out to the motherfucking filmmakers, actors, everybody in the movie. I think y'all did good. Like I said, for the budget y'all had too. Like if I was if I wanted to grab on the curve, I wouldn't even give it a seven just because like I know they had no budget. Nobody got paid for it. It's a passion project. Everybody had fun doing it. I had fun watching. So I think that's Good score for it. Give me that three stars out of five, son. If you like these, let me know. I'll make more of them. Because all these goddamn movies got to get watched one day. Because not only do I have these three bags for the podcast, I got five piles of movies by my TV and shit that I need to watch. That I leave quick reviews for. I might not do videos for all of them. I think I may just do them like mainly for these movies that I bought for the podcast. I'm sure we won't ever all get to. But maybe some of them might get videos too. I'm not sure. But let me know. How, you know, y'all think I should handle this shit. How y'all would like to view these. Because, hey, I'm doing it for y'all. So, let me know how y'all feel, son. And if you like these and want to hear the actual podcast, it's called The Home Video Hustle. Some episodes are here on YouTube, but the best place is to catch it. You know, your the podcatcher, you know, Spotify or Podbean or Apple Podcasts, you know, episodes every Friday. These videos will come out just whenever I got one for you. I don't know if I have a set schedule yet. So, but they'll be coming though. Believe me, it ain't going to be like a once every six months thing. I will say at least once a month, if not twice, you know, or not more, but at least once a month, I'm going to start doing these because I do want to get some of these movies out the pile and maybe I even get some friends on here. You never fucking know, man. But thank you for watching. I'll leave links in the description, all that shit. If you want to check out more of what we do and peace. at the worst. Ugh!